So moving on to 10.2, we already kind of went over this idea of, uh, or did we link or unlinked? Um, basically linked genes are on the same chromosome. So they kind of move together. Two traits tend to show up together. That's basically what that means. Um, because they're on that same chromosome that then gets delivered to that gamete that then that organism used to you know, build its tissues. Um, unlinked means they're not on the same chromosome. So in this case, these genes, these traits get passed around and come up in, can come up in um, you know, predictable combinations or frequencies. So unlinked are not on same gene kind of what we associate this mostly the linked genes that was discovered by Thomas Hunt Morgan with the with the uh, fruit flies that what what that was what was really significant about the fruit flies was this discovery is really uh, elucidation description um, based on evidence of the fact that you know this random assortment um, that you have from unlinked genes isn't true so it just so happened all the traits that Mendel looked at were unlinked and that's where he came up with his ratios. So this would be, um, you know, the corn or pea plant, sorry, not corn, but pea. Pea plants. And, uh, you know, this, this whole nature of science, you know, looking at patterns and trends, and then, you know, when those patterns, patterns and trends don't quite hold up, you gotta bring exceptions to the rules. Um, the, whole, the whole idea of like the, the law of independent assortment, is that really a law? Not really, because we have link genes, but that's how we call it. So we really have to be careful in science and we use a word like law, like this is always how it is. Um, we know the law, the colloquial, you know, understanding of laws, you know, is that they are analyzed, judged, and then applied. There's never like black and white, uh, cut and dry um, laws. Same thing in science. So here's a little diagram. Um, unlinked genes located on different chromosome, chromosomes. chromosomes. Different, and what we see here, a bunch of these genes are a part of what's called a linkage group. It means they're on the same gene, but they will, you know, scientists use that word linkage group, saying how, especially in fruit flies, that say a uh, darker body, shorter wings, and red eyes are all in a linkage group, meaning they're in the on the same gene, and they tend to travel together as they look at, um, you know, different phenotypes. I should get some images of some fruit flies. So here we go. I found, uh, I quickly found some uh, images. Here's a wild type, you know, normal. And then curly wing, look at that, it's pretty wild. White eyes, so the eyes are now white instead of red. Vestigial wings with little wimpy, little tiny wings. Ebony, you know, black color for the body. Um, we got orange eyes, no eyes. <laughs> um, head legs, what's that? A tenopedia. Um, so there's legs coming out of the head. Oh, dang. And then yellow. So these are all mutants that scientists have I believe some are natural, maybe some might have been influenced by radiation or something, I'm not quite too sure. I would not put it past scientists to um, use radiation to speed things along. So here we got unlinked on different chromosomes, a little repetitive, but sometimes that's how we learn. And linked on the same chromosome. Unlinked two genes sort into gametes um, independently. Then 
they're they travel you know just randomly like shuffling a deck of cards and when you do that you get phenotypic ratios nine three three one and I'll show you how that works on a later slide um, and since the link genes don't assort independently, they give you unexpected phenotypes. Um, not through 9331, so unexpected phenotypic ratios. So that's not 9331. Those ratios are different. And again, this is kind of what we went. Um, well, I think well, we could crossing over mostly before, um, but these unlinked genes segregate independently um, from meiosis. You know, we have metaphase one, where we just separate them, uh, separate these homologous chromosomes. So now you go from something that's two n to something that is n. Right over here. 2n down to n, and then you have my um, met, uh, anaphase 2. Sorry, got a little ahead. Uh, right here, um, since they're lined up, you're going to be in anaphase soon, but it's still in metaphase. Metaphase. I did make a mistake up here though also. Sorry about that. Oh no, I did I didn't. Metaphase one and then metaphase two. And then here we see the gametes. We see the different combinations. Uh, based on which which side we see the two blues like we saw before, line up on one side, two blues on the other. Um, and they just separate independently and go into their uh, their gametes. So the variation we see, all the different traits, um, can be either discrete, meaning they're either this or that, one category or another, or maybe four categories, or they're continuous, meaning they're not quite the same for everybody, but they're on kind of a, a range. So a good way to think about continuous would be things like height, you know, people's height, their weight, um, you know, our length, our finger length. And if you went outside, like I got a bunch of leaves out here and measured the leaf, you know, the leaf lengths would all be a little bit different. Shorter ones, um, longer ones, but along a variation, mostly average, right? Kind of like most of them would be in this average area, but you'd have some taller ones, some shorter ones. Now, in terms of discontinuous variation, you have these categories, and supposedly no in between, but we'll talk about that. Uh, things like, can you roll your tongue? Um, fingerprints. Eye color, you know, we have blue, green, brown, um, but as we know, there is, you know, there's shades in between those. So, ah, that one's a little bit, again, it's one of these, we categorize things are not quite, quite perfect. Um, and blood groups, you know, A blood, B blood, A, B blood, etc. And you can see we can represent our continuous variation with a line graph that can show uh, the average and those um, the individuals on the uh, with few less frequency and then bar graph you know there's distinct categories there um, so a lot of genes uh, this is controlled by the the gene and the environment the continuous variation like your height and your weight right Uh, for discontinuous, um, there are a limited number of phenotypes. Whereas, you know, you might have, you know, there's there's an unlimited range or height people can be, right? 
all sorts of variations but really like with eye color there's there's a limited um, set of colors really you can go to but like I say here like what color are her eyes you know it's hard to say so like I said there's you know this idea that eye, eye color is completely um, discreet you know I would uh, there are, there's a, a bigger range than, than we sometimes uh, think so the phenotypes and remember Let's just, I'm sorry, go back. You know, that, that word phenotype, that has to do with the appearance. All right, and the genotype is what the actual genes are. So here we have the genotype listed, which here's all lowercase, this is all uppercase, and the phenotype is shown here in the corn, what it looks like. It looks like white corn and then red corn. Now if you mix white corn and red corn together, all lowercase all uppercase you get a mixture between the two as you might as you might expect and then if you take this um, individual and self fertilize you're gonna get a real blending okay you see the the amount of pink has to do with how many see how it has this has more of the capital letters and over here, this has more of a lower case, and that's controlling the color. And your skin color, you know, human skin color follows a real similar pattern here um, that you can, you know, use this, this concept for. So, but at the very end here, not gonna be a whole lot. Um, a, B, B, C, C, there we go. And then we have all capitals over here. So, continuous variation, we just see a lot of different combinations. Now, chi-square tests are used um, to show whether what we're seeing is uh, different from what we might expect. Second. Sorry, I think the, uh, the video screen was in the right spot. Anyway, I wanted to see the whole thing. And the chi-square can be kind of confusing, and I'll tell you why. Um, we have been studying p-values from t-tests and ANOVA, and you guys have learned that if your statistical statistical test is less than a certain number, then it's significant. Remember, less than 0 0.05. If that's your p-value p from your t-test or ANOVA, you know it's significant. Chi-square is the opposite. <laughs> If your chi-square value is greater than um, your uh, the chi-square value that you're looking for, then it's significant. So it's greater than a certain number. So in this case, and we'll do this in a later slide, but the chi-square, oh, but we did this last year too, remember with the M&Ms. Um, so the chi-square value here turned out to be, oh, was, was it Heather and Moss? I think it may have been like Heather and Moss together. And then we did M&Ms too. Um, the chi-square value is 219. Now that's for three degrees of freedom because there are, see how there's four possible outcomes for the phenotypes? Purple long, purple round, red long, red round. What you do is you take however many possibilities, outcome minus one, you get three. Then you gotta look at your table to look at your critical value. That's the word I was I couldn't remember a second ago. What your chi-square quick critical value is. And um, usually we're looking at 0.05, um, uh, the 0.05 level. And here, um, the critical value is 7.85. So if your chi-square value is greater than that, which it is, then you would say there's a significant difference. And here we see that, okay? 
So in this case, you would reject the null that there is no difference and accept, oh, not nut, null, accept. Okay, your, your null would be, these genes are not linked, they follow a normal pattern. And your alternative would be, these genes are linked. Um, so in this case, yes, these genes are definitely linked. They do not follow the 9331 ratio that we calculated with the, see how we calculated um, the, uh, the total with you know, the 9331 ratio. This is what we would expect out of a total of 427 um, uh, individuals. Okay, so these are linked genes. So, we, I talked a lot about Morgan, that's this guy here, and then Mandel right here. Mandel was the P guy right there, the, the monk, and he's the one that came up with that independent assortment. Um, but new results from 30, 40 years later just didn't fit that model, so you had to change it. And it was this Thomas Hunt Morgan that really had that interesting idea. Nobody had really come up with an idea for it. They noticed the ratios weren't working, but he's the one that came up with the idea um, of linked genes. He's like, they must be on the same chromosome. Um, and they showed different patterns of sex linkage on top of that meaning males tended to get more of these some traits than the females so something's going on also um, with uh, you know depending on you know the genes that were carried on the X and the Y chromosomes um, so here we have just the parent test cross kind of showing you what he did Heterozygous wild type, remember they have one of each gene. Homozygous mutant. And the genes um, linked on the same chromosome, uh, independent assortment does not apply. So let's look at this first um, Punnett square here. So um, this yellow round um, allele or uh, the yellow round um, plant is going to be oop, there. There we go. Capital Y, capital Y, capital R, capital R. True breeding. You have both dominant alleles there. And the green wrinkle will be little y, little y, capital R, kip, capital R. And we know that because if it had a big Y or a big R, it would be green or round. Um, so all of the gametes that the yellow round is going to give are going to be big Y, big R. That's all it has. And same thing for the green and wrinkle. The only gametes that it can give are Y and R. Remember, there's four... Um, chromosomes here and there's two chromosomes down here because their meiosis happened and divided the number of chromosomes by half divided number okay so if you then combine if you mix these two um, take this, these two gametes together, you're going to get this F1 generation that's heterozygous, right? It has one of each. And then what you want to do is set up, this would be a Punnett square. Showing, really trying to look through all the possible combinations. And the way you figure out the combinations are, I just take the first one. Go to here, big Y, big R, and then go to the other one, big Y, little R, and then go to the Y, 
big Y, big R, little Y, little R. And then you need to come up with the, uh, just put them in the Punnett square. You just kind of match them up. So here would be, let me give it a little bit of space here. Big R, big R, big Y, big Y. And when you do these, you gotta kinda watch yourself because you can get big R, little R, big Y. And the, uh, the position of the Y and the R's were reversed in the second slide, but don't worry, it doesn't really matter. Oh, let me readjust the side. <laughs> little r, little r, big y. Oh. <laughs> little y, little y, everything little. So what I want to do now, I'm just going to use my. Uh, so let, let's let's look at this. So round yellow. If it has big r's, is the big y is going to be round and yellow. So round and yellow. Here, it's going to be round and yellow as well. Here, round and yellow. Here, round and yellow. It's got a, uh, a dominant allele for each of those. Here, each of those traits. Round and yellow. Here's going to, oh! This is going to be round and green because you have the little y's there. Round and green. This here can go back to round and yellow. This is gonna be round and green. Just a couple little Y's. Um, over here, round and yellow. Um, round and yellow. Ooh, wrinkled and yellow. That was kind of fun. Here, a wrinkled and yellow. <laughs> round and yellow here this is going to be round and green and here it's going to be uh, wrinkled and yellow and here it's going to be wrinkled and green So, if we're looking at this, remember it's telling you about the 933 ratios before. How many round yellow do we have? Let me write this. Round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow. Wrinkled green. Round yellow. How many round yellow? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Round green. One, two, three. 
round uh, wrinkled yellow one two three wrinkled green one so here we're showing this is what ratio we would expect if we take two if we cross two heterozygous organism we would expect that 9331 ratio.